Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I've got Chris Frangiola here and we are going to cover the juiciest crime about Lori Vallow. But first, I want to get and do my famous recaps of the two best franchises of Real Housewives, Real Housewives of New York and Beverly Hills. So here we go with Real Housewives of New York. Well, it's Fashion Week. And Sonia by Sonia Morgan is finally back. We had a line in 2014, and now we're back in 2019, and it's ready to wear, which means it's under $250, and who is it ready to wear that? So um, also during Fashion Week, Tinsley is very excited because she has been asked to close the show of some Project Runway guy, and they put her in this weird, like, dress that's, uh, it looks like a costume. It's like an, like, it looks like a doll costume. And then she has like tennis shoes on it. And as she's getting ready for it, she sees a crown and she goes, I want to wear a crown. And then her mom, Dale, there starts crying and is like, Tinsley, you're back. Tinsley, this is, you've lost yourself. And she goes, I know, mama, I did. I lost myself. Now I'm back. She's her old self again. I'm like, hasn't she been on Real House of New York for like the last four years? Like, I think she's back in page six in the limelight that she was when they keep talking about when she was the it girl, when she had her other reality show called Society. or so I don't know what it was called, but it was on for a minute. So I don't know why they make such a big deal like she's back. But whatever. She's excited to walk in this fashion show. So they're all going to go see that fashion show first. And Ramona is there, and she's with her dog, and she's at home. And she's like, come on, I want to work out my tummy a little bit. It's my problem area. And then she says, you know, you know, if you're – you." You, if you aren't invited to a fashion show, it's almost like you're a leper, okay? You know, and even if I didn't want to go to one, if I didn't, I would because otherwise I'd be ostracized. And I just love the way she said ostracized. I mean, again, you guys, I am Ramona. She mixes up words. She mispronounces them. And of course, you know, she's and, – and she's honest. She goes to the fashion show of Tinsley's and it's very weird clothes and she goes – you know, it's not me. It's a little edgy. It's a little strange. But I can appreciate the spectacle. And uh, she goes right up to Tinsley after she models. And she goes, why did you, why were you, why did you walk so quick? It was so quick. But let me tell you something, Tinsley. You know, you really, really upset me, Tinsley, because you left my room a disaster. You had soda drinks. You stained my duvet because, as we know, Tinsley got real wasted in the Hamptons. And she took a bowl of spaghetti from their takeout up to her room. And she did put it on a plate or a towel. But I guess a tiny spot got in the duvet. And Tinsley was like, come on, it's not. You probably got it from Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay, I'll buy you another one. Like, who cares? God, God, I'm trying, whatever. I just walked in a fashion show. I'm finally back. Why can't you be happy for me? Um, Dorinda is making lots of comments throughout this episode that she and John are not doing well. She says, you know, it's kind of weird. You know, I... I I only see John when there's a party, and then I don't hear from him for two, three days. So you know what? I'm not returning his calls. It's a little, it's a little disturbing. It really is. And she's Dorinda's new confidant is her makeup artist Luke. He just keeps coming over and doing her makeup, and then she talks about uh, John to Luke, the makeup artist, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, so now they go to another fashion show. And it's Pamela Rowland, who is a real fashion designer, and, and I really liked her clothes. And they all kind of personally know her, but I guess Ramona knows her the best. And they show them doing, like, the red carpet. And Ramona's, like, just walks up where the Pamela Rowland designer is, and she's like, can I interrupt? I really don't mind. I really – you know what? That's what I am. I That's who I am. I'm the interrupter, and I'm interrupting. I just like to have my own – photo with Pamela Rowland. Can I just do that? It's like, this is a real fashion designer. This is, you know, it's Pamela Rowland. This is icon. And I got us all seats right in the front row. It's a really coveted seat. And then Leah's not there. And I'm like, where's Leah? And Tinsley says, oh, she had some problem with her family. Well, I don't really care. You know, like this is really rude. And it's really disturbing. And then next to me is Sonia, who the whole time has her glasses on, which aren't really flattering, by the way. I said, Sonia, you, you look really matronly in those glasses. And it's like, I can't see either, but nobody knows that. So it's like, get some flattering glasses. And Sonia's freaking out because she's doing a fashion show herself. So she's got her phone out. You know, the fashion show is only three minutes. And I'm like, really? Really, Sonia? Wow. 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 You can't watch Pamela Rowland's beautiful fashion for three minutes. And Sonia just starts to freak out because her fashion show is in two days. 
And she's like, you know, I got to find models. I got to get 14-year-old models that want to be seen. I need to find some 14-year-old models. So they go to have uh, a cute lunch after. Meanwhile, prior, prior to this, I thought this was kind of funny. And this is a photo I have on my screen here on my YouTube uh, session here. Is She just goes backstage to the Pamela Rowland show. And it's like, can somebody please, Luann says, can somebody please do my hair? <laughs> there's, a doubt there's a lot of hairdressers here. And so the editors put, here is Luke or Locke or whatever his name is, hairdresser for the models actually in the show. And they gave her like a fresh blowout. And I just loved it because Luann's like, what, I'm walking around. I'm going to a lot of fashion shows. There's a million hairdressers I used to model. I need a little pick-me-up. So they did. They get to their outdoor seating, um, which looks really fun. And Ramona's ready to eat. She's ready for a cute lunch and to enjoy herself. Well, Leah shows up. And meanwhile, Ramona's like, you know, I'd really like some oysters. I'd like some oysters. And Dorinda's like, oh, my God. Ramona and the oysters. It's it's absolutely, it's like watching Ramona eat oysters. It's like watching a porn flick. The tongue, the mouth, the sexual sounds, you know. And it's just like, it's, it's like she's, you know, guarding Neptune's throne and oh this is the food of the sea and and uh Ramona's like well I'm sorry I really like oysters I'm sorry that that's just like my favorite food it's really refreshing it's really um it's it's like low calorie it's really delicious and um and so they they sit there and Leah comes and then Leah shows up and she said I'm sorry that I missed the Pamela Roland show and then Ramona berates her again and she's like well you know it was really it was really rude it was really rude I got you these tickets I got these you know really coveted seats why couldn't you come and Leah goes well I talked to my dad and uh he said that my mother won't speak to me because she found out I went back to drinking after being sober for nine years I mean it's not like anything didn't happen and then of course they flash back to the greatest episode ever, which I reenacted with my Barbies. Guys, go find it on my Instagram and everywhere else. Whatever your favorite thing is, it's on there. Facebook, whatever. Um, and that's where she gets wasted. She threw tiki torches. She got completely naked. So, yeah, the mom probably has something to be concerned about. And Ramona goes, what do you mean she won't text you back? Well, I mean, I texted her and said I had been drinking again, and she didn't text me back. And she goes, What? I mean, texting is for when you're, like, running late and you're saying, you know, I'll meet you at the restaurant, order me 36 oysters or whatever. Like, you know, get my order in because I'm really starving. That's what you use texting for. Texting you don't use to tell your mother that after nine years of being sober, you're drinking again. You know, I really don't understand these millennials. I really find it kind of, like, disturbing and strange. So um, they uh, they talk about their Sonia's stressed. And now the next thing they're going to go to is Sonia's fashion show. And um, and again, Ramona has got her line. She was just like, you know, I really don't understand what she's trying to do here because it's like it's already made merchandise. It's like already out there. You know, like I want to support her, but it's I'm like, really, really, Sonia? Like this isn't it's not like you're a designer design it. But, you know, good for Sonia. I'm like, OK, love the support. And Sonia is freaking out. She's like, I mean, I'm going to really have some really great buyers here. I've got Century 21 here. I'm like, Century 21? Is that the realtor? I'm very confused. So she gets her outfits all together and she sends some dresses to people. And Dorinda is there and um, she's wearing a blazer of hers. And John comes up and he's like, how you doing, baby? And she's like, I'm all right, John. I'm really okay. You know, it's like I haven't heard from you in a while. And you know, it's really upsetting. It's really, I find it really strange. And it sets back the relationship because it's not being truthful, you know? And, you know, all I do is I, I want to sit at home and he wants to go out to parties. And then I hear about it. I'm like, yeah, I guess a lot of people are walking up to him going, what are you doing here without Dorinda? Because I guess he's out a lot without Dorinda, according to Dorinda. So um, Leah and Tinsley meet in the car to go to Sonia's fashion show. And... And Tinsley's in a real cute little white dress. And Leah's wearing this long dress that's the mugshot of little Kim on it. And she goes, is that Sonia's? And she's like, no. Sonia sent me this awful, like, pajamas to wear and some weird hot pink fedora hat. And I'm gonna, not wearing that. She's like, it's very passive graph. It's really rude. And I think she's still mad at me because I stream, screamed at her about st stop living in 1985. So they get to the fashion show. And 
Ramona is there with this girl, Leah. Now, I think this girl, Leah, who's a really pretty brunette who I met on the boat when I was hanging out with Jill Zarin in um, Bo- in Boca Raton with uh, Luann, the last time I performed in Palm Beach, the last time I ever performed in the world, okay? A couple months ago, still. That is where, when I started watching the show, I'm like, why does this girl look familiar? Well, she really is friends with Luann and Ramona, and she's really pretty and was very nice. Anyway, they keep showing her. I think that they were definitely hoping to make her another housewife, and she probably just wasn't controversial enough because she seems like a pretty classy, normal person. But she's participating and stuff. I just don't think it's, like, popping. Like, I don't think she had some integral part of a storyline in which they had to make her a um, a regular housewife. So Leah, I mean, um, this girl, not Leah, I don't know what this girl's name is, the, the dark-haired friend. Anyway, she... The darkhead friend and Ramona go up to the to get a drink, and Ramona's like, "Yeah, I'll have some vodka with a little bit of fruit juice." And they're like, "We don't have any." You don't, you know? It's like, what kind of fashion show is this? Okay, so I'll have a vodka with a, a splash of sangria with it. And she's like, "You know what? Now I'm a mixologist. That's what I am. I can make, I can create. I, you know, I'm making my own concoction and I'm making my own mixology drink." So the fashion show happens, and. You know, it's fine. It, it looks, there's some pretty cute things, whatever. And then afterward, Leah again addresses her, uh, addresses Sonia and throws the, the outfit at her and was like, why would you think I'd want to wear pajamas? And Sonia is so great. She goes back, she puts on the pajama loungewear and the pink fedora and struts around and it's just fun. Like they're just like, and even Leah, the new girl goes, how can you be mad at Sonia? So they're just so all of them are just so freaking entertaining. There were just so many great lines in it once again. So um, I just I just loved it. And then because when Sonia sees her dress, which has little Kim on it, she's like, who is that? Is that like Beyonce? Who is that? I like that. And then Dorinda's like, I can appreciate it. I had a dress with a gangster on it once too. You know, it's fun. It's fun. It's gangster. It's gangster wear. It's a little edgy. I mean, they're just all... It's just such a mixed match of just amazingness. And, um, okay, so we, I loved it. And then next week we see that Jacques returns. Remember Jacques, Luann's boyfriend? And I took a photo of it and threw it up here on the screen at the office because, um, you know, he's really aged. I mean, Luann looks exactly the same. And I don't know what Luann does besides, you know, Pilates and stuff because it's, if she does get anything done to her face, it's, really subtle and great but you know guys they age if they don't get Botox he let his hair go gray he looks so much older than when they were dating it's kind of shocking but, I mean still good looking I'm just saying it's just sometimes there's like those hard years with guys kind of like maybe like 43 to 50 where they like really age you remember like Obama when he was in office you were just like holy shit you look at him in those eight years that's kind of what Jacques is doing um okay so uh Ben, now let's get into Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So, Dorit is there, and they're so excited to be in their new house. And she goes, Bubba, what are you doing? Oh, my God, PK's running his office from his hot tub, mind you. Are you going to stay in the hot tub all day, baby? Oh, I'm, do- I'm doing my business with boy George. Well, some of- one of us has to work. That's I'm I'm absolutely heartbroken because Kyle invited us both, PK and I both, to a beautiful dinner party at her home, which is only two minutes away. And PK promised to make an event of Boy George's. And now that we know from you guys listening to my show and I had to read on that they were trying to do a reality show, PK, Dorit, and um Boy George, which is funny because when I talk about Dorit sometimes in introducing her, like when I do my live shows, rest in peace, I would say, um, <laughs> meaning I don't do the live shows anymore, but we're all, we're coming back, people. Um, I would say, you know, I think she was, well, she's in a polyamorous relationship with PK and Boy George. Obviously, she wasn't sexually, but they were trying to do a show, kind of the three of them starring and their unique relationship. So anyway, he's out with Boy George and she's going to head to the party. But before the party, we, um, Erica Jane is going to her vocal coach because she is going to star in Chicago, baby, on Broadway. And she starts to sing and she's like, you know, practicing and she sounds pretty good. And she's like, 
Every word on their lips is Roxy. <sighs> and she's, you know, getting into it. And she sounds good. And then she says, um, I remember the first time that um, singing wasn't a pleasant experience for me. I was in sixth grade and I hit a high note at a school play. And from the back of the auditorium, I could hear my mother's cackle just laughing at me. She was always very competitive and really quite awful. <laughs> like, then later on, Denise, who just had this hernia operation, she's like, I can, I do have a, a strong withhold for pain, I guess, because I just remember being a little girl and I slashed the whole side of my leg and it was bleeding profusely. And my mother with her cigarette in her hand took out the hose and just hosed me off. And said, get along, girl. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, well, I guess these are the kind of mothers that raise real housewives. So, you know what? If you raise your daughter with some freaking tough love, I guess they can take being on the show pretty well. Because I do think it takes a lot on your psyche. So, here's to the mothers that were pretty freaking harsh. Erica Jane and Denise's. Um, they did okay, right? They're doing quite well. Okay, so... Sutton shows up to a, a lunch with Lisa Rinna, who Lisa Rinna now confides that Amelia Gray, um, Amelia Gray had a tough time. It's hard for these kids going off to college in New York and modeling and taking care of their own apartment and, you know, getting their job. It was a lot. And Amelia Gray, she just could not handle it. And so she came home and she's home and, and Teddy's like, well, yeah, hey, everyone can parent the way they want, but when I left home, which is Hilton Head in the South, and came here, I wanted to leave a couple months after being in L.A. too. But John Cougar Mellencamp told me, no, you're staying there, baby, and I'm glad he did. But hey, you know, everyone parents the way they want. And Sutton shows up to the lunch, and um, everyone praises Sutton for her gift bags because she gave everybody an $1,800 clutch in their gift bag. Now, I think she only gave it to the Real Housewives, which I think is really smart because they loved the purse and they loved her. And um, again, they talk about should they go to Teddy's all-in workout retreat, retreat or not. And Teddy's like, again, I, hey, do what you want. Come. I mean, I'd love for you to come, but I also don't care if you want to come. You can come for all of it. You can come for some of it, but I'd prefer that you'd come for just a very little bit of it. But I also want you, I don't want you to come for none of it, but just like, it really wouldn't make a difference to me. Like, and so Sutton's like, well, God, I don't know if anybody even wants me there. Like I'm making this effort to drive three hours. And it's like, who is this girl? It's very confusing. It's really strange. So um, I'm working on my Sutton, you guys. I think I've She's going to be fun to do. Okay, so they get to um, Kyle's party, and she's happy to be home because she's been filming her biggest role that required her to cut these bangs that nobody really has enjoyed, including Kyle. To reprise her five-year-old role when she was five, she played a little girl in the movie Halloween, and she had bangs in that. So the director said, can you bring back the bangs? She comes home, and... Mauricio really is just the biggest delight of a Real House husband. He has now kind of gravitated towards legalized pot and edibles, and uh, he, he really is enjoying them. And I think we're enjoying watching it. And uh, his name is Love Bean. I never knew she called him Love Bean. And now he's in her phone as Love Bean. And I think that's great. You know what, guys? Maybe that's how to keep things spark. What, have they been together over 20 years? Just start a whole new name for your partner. Mine's been Peter for a long time. <laughs> I want to start calling Peter Love Beat and see if we can be as happy as Kyle and Mauricio because they seem to have the, the recipe of loving success. They just seem to get along the best. So she has a beautiful dinner party, and they sit down, and, um, of course, Lisa Renna, who really should be paid the most on this show, she says, um, you know what I'd like to do, guys? Why don't we go around the table and say what our first impression was and now what do we really think? Well, Kyle says to Garcelle, I thought you were gorgeous and now I still think you're gorgeous and even more badass than ever. And Garcelle says to 
Lisa, I, when we did a show together, I thought, who is this bad bitch? And you're amazing. And then Lisa Ren is like, you know what I thought of you, Erica? I was so intimidated. And then I was even more intimidated because I'm like, this girl just keeps getting more fabulous. And then, <laughs> and then Erica Jane uh, says to Dorit, well, Dorit, I'll tell you, when you first started talking, I didn't know what the hell you were saying. But now I found you to be sweet kind, and really so much more fun than I ever thought could be possible. Well, thank you, Eric. I really appreciate that, mind you. And Denise, when I first met you, Denise, I just have never connected with someone on such an easy, wonderful level, and I just appreciate who you are as a person. Oh, well, thank you. And now Denise has to go to Sutton, and Denise goes, well, Sutton, I mean, I saw you and you're in your couture and it's, you know, all these fancy things. And Erica Jane under her breath is like, couture, I know, we all wear couture. Okay, it's not my style, but good for you, Sutton. We also wear ready to wear. Do we really have the same style? Shouldn't say that in that part. I'm taking some uh, a little, yeah, some one of creative liberties as I put this together for you guys. And um, so Denise goes, but, you know, I didn't think you'd really connect with me and my, you know, top knot bun and my jeans and my white T-shirts. But you really are such a down-to-earth person, and I'm really excited that you're part of the group. It's a little awkward because she doesn't really know her. And then Sutton goes, oh, well, thank you, Denise. Um, okay, Teddy, um, I'll, I'm so not a nice person, and I'm going to tell you right now what I think because um, you're all being real phony. But, um, yeah, Teddy, when I met you, I thought, mm, I thought you were going to be pretty boring. And then I thought, oh, my gosh, and now she's pregnant, too. Oh, God, help us all. But I actually now found you to be a little more interesting. And Teddy's like, um, is this like a compliment or what is this? No, I just mean, you know, with a, do you want us to come? Do you not want us to come? You and then Lisa Run is like, well, one thing I know for sure is I'm not coming. <laughs> And then Garcelle's like, well, I never wanted to come, and I'm not coming either. <laughs> and then Teddy goes, okay, you guys, you know what? I really, oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, guys, she's about to cry. Step off. Hey, hey, Teddy's about to cry. Hold the second entree. And so then Teddy goes, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she gets up and runs off. And you just, oh, my God, haven't we all been there? And then to also be pregnant on top of it. But and the, I don't think there's anything worse that when everyone's kind of on you and we've all been there with girlfriends and you're just about to crack and then someone's like, wait, you guys, hold off. She's about to cry. Oh, then you, then there's no way you can hold back the tears. And so Teddy comes back and she gets it together. She goes, no, it just it was it was a lot. It was like, you know, just the last three days of it. Sutton Sutton's like, well, um, I think it was the last two days. Well, today's the third. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. I, it's, I really didn't mean it at all. And, uh, and the night is about to end. And just then, Kyle, who I take it back, maybe also should be paid the most. Because I don't know if she came up with this on her own. You know, she is a writer-producer. But she goes over and says... Well, let's talk about something else since Lisa Renna's um, game gave us some golden moments. I think I can bring something to the table. Aaron, what is it exactly that you do? Now, Aaron has this alternative kind of business, which is very popular in, in a lot of places, and especially in the Malibu, L.A. area. It's alternative medicine. It's alternative machines and whatnot. And, um, but I felt that... I think the producers are, you know, out to get Denise in a lot of ways because everyone knows if you study like I have the history of Real Housewives, if you have one great season, your first season, as Denise did, I coined her St. Denise, get ready for season two. And I noticed it last week when Aaron, being such a sweet husband, was nursing her back to health. He brought these elements from his office like something that she lays on that's like radio frequency or whatever that'll help her healing. And he mentions that it's going to be in suits for astronauts in NASA soon, but he can't say that. And they showed it and they featured it a lot. And then they showed it in a recap. And I'm like, I kind of felt like they were sort of 
poking at it, like making a little fun of what he does because it's not traditional medicine. So as he's sitting there, they they ask him to explain it. And the only way he can explain it is the way he knows it, which is very scientific. So, of course, everyone's looking around like bored. They can't keep up. It's talking about splitting an atom and molecular whatever. And, you know, that this is alternative ways and that people can heal these things that would mod- normal medicine might take a while. But he's seen cases happen where people have healed from, you know, things in just a couple months or something. And uh, Mauricio is high as a kite. And he's like, man, yeah, sounds great. That sounds super interesting. <laughs> And everyone else is just sort of like complete. And then Denise, being like the overprotective wife, gets like, okay, honey, now you're going on too a little too long. You know, people are starting to lose interest. And so she kind of comes around and is like, okay, we're good. And you catch, you know, because everyone's being mic, she's like, we're good. We're done. You know, you don't need to explain anymore. He's like, what do you mean? I'm not done like explaining how this atom is, is devised or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, I think they're kind of, it's all part of the thing to kind of like crack open their lives that, you know, um, that isn't secretive. I mean, you know, he's got a, a an office right there, but he says that people are following them because of the the, the crazy alternative things they're doing that there's first, they kind, kind of hints that like maybe big pharmacies don't want this to be more known, that you can cure things without all these uh, prescription drugs. And, um, you know, they they show them in the car driving and they're like, who's following us? <laughs> and somebody wrote like, well, maybe it's the production team that's following you. Aren't they following you to the next location where they were about to film you? So I don't know. It's all made for very entertaining. I'm excited to continue to watch it. And then I, right after I, I the night after I watched, I turned on Showtime and Wild Things was on, which I've never seen and talk about a movie ahead of its time. Pretty juicy. I need to watch it. I just posted that, that it was very good. And she's in it, and she kisses a girl, and she looks gorgeous. And it's uh, Denise's, you know, really what made her a star. So anyway, so excited about these two. Thank you, New York and Beverly Hills, for saving us all. Um, and now let's get into the juiciest crime of the past six months, Lori Vallow with Chris Frangiola. <laughs> 